Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss the laws of exponents. I'm going to explain where each law comes from, as well as giving some examples of applying the law. The first law of exponents is about multiplying powers with the same base. So I've got the same base, a, and then I've got one factor, a to the power of m, times by another factor, same base, but different exponent. So let's see what that would be. If I had a times a times a, m times, times by a times a times a times a, n times, how many times would I be multiplying by a? Surely, it's going to be m plus n times. So the first law of exponents says a to the power of m times a to the power of n is a to the power of m plus n. Let's look at some examples. If I had x to the power of 5 times by x to the power of 4, I could write that in a short way as x to the power of 9. Another example, if I have 2 to the power of 3 times by 2 to the power of 4, I keep the same base. So it will be 2 to the power of 7. Be careful that if you've got a numerical base, that you don't get yourself mixed up and then also change the base. And the last example is a bit of a mixed one. a, 3a, b to the power of 4, times by negative 2a cubed b. That will be, I'm multiplying a negative by a positive, so it will be negative. 3 times 2 is 6. And then for the a's, if I don't have an exponent, the exponent is 1. So a times a to the power of 3 will be a to the power of 4. And b to the power of 4 times b to the power of 1 is b to the power of 5. It may be helpful for you when you multiply to remember s, n, v. First you multiply the signs or decide on the signs. Then you multiply the numbers or the constants. And lastly you multiply the variables. So remember, when you multiply powers with the same base, what you do is you add the exponents. The second law of exponents refers to dividing powers with the same base. So you can see my rule has a to the power of m and the same base, a, and then to the power of n, a different exponent, and I'm dividing. You could also write these as a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. Let's see what the rule is. So if I've got a times a times a times a, m times, and I'm dividing by a times a times a times a times a times a, a n times, if I was to simplify this fraction and divide top and bottom by the same factor, how many a's would be left? Surely the number of a's left would be m minus n all being multiplied together. So the rule is a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. Let's look at some examples. So firstly, a very simple one, if I had x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 5, I subtract the exponents and I have x to the power of 3. Or let's look at one with a numerical base, 2 to the power of 9, divided, let's rather write it like this, divided by 2. Now I keep the same base, so that will be 2, and something without an exponent has an exponent of 1, so 9 minus 8 is, sorry, 9 minus 1 is 8. So remember, when I'm dividing, even if the base is a constant, I still subtract the exponents and keep the same base. Let's look at one with a little bit more going on, a to the power of 9, a to the power of 4, out of 24, a to the power of 3, e to the power of 3. So let's simplify the coefficients first. 8 goes into both, so 2 and 3. And so I get 2 out of 3. And then for my variables, 9 minus 3, a to the power of 6, 
and b4 minus 3 will be equal to the power of 1, and I don't need to do an exponent. Now remember, you can also write that fraction as 2 thirds a to the power of 6, b, and those two mean exactly the same thing. So in summary, if I divide powers with the same base, I subtract b exponents. The third law of exponents involves raising a power to a power. So before I look at the general rule, let me give you an example of one with values that are maybe more comfortable to you. So if I've got a squared to the power of 3, that would mean a squared times a squared times a squared, three times. And then to get the exponent, if I wanted to summarize this, that would be a to the power of 2, 3 times would be 6. So let's go with it with variables only, a to the power of n, all to the power of n, would be a to the power of m times a to the power of m times a to the power of m, blah, 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 plus a to the power, time, sorry, times a to the power of m. How many times? n times. So if I'm adding m's all together, and I've got n of them, there would be m times n as. So my rule is, if I've got a to the power of m all to the power of n, I get a to the power of mn, meaning I am multiplying. Let's look at some examples. First one, if I've got x cubed to the power of 4, that'll be x to the power of 12. Or, how about I've got negative 2 squared to the power of 5, since my exponent is odd, the negative will still be there. So I'll have negative 2 to the power of 10. So in summary, if I'm raising a power to a power, I multiply the exponents. The fourth law of exponents involve situations where you have more than one factor inside a bracket that's been raised to a power. So let's see how this law works. If I had, let's do the multiplication one, a times b all to the power of m, that would be the same as ab to the power of m, or ab times ab times ab times ab m times. Now, since you can multiply in any order, I could rearrange these. a times a times a, m times, times b times b times b times b, n times. So the fourth law of exponents is that each of the factors in the bracket will be to the power of m. And I'm sure you can see this will work the same with division a to the power of m over b to the power of m. Let's look at some examples. So firstly, let's say I've got 5x to the power of 2. So what this means, what the law means, is that both factors will be to the power of 2. So 5 to the power of 2 is 25 and x, x squared will be like that. Let's see my next example. If I have negative 2 out of y to the power of 4, a negative value to the power of 4 will become a positive. 2 to the power of 4 is 16 out of y to the power of 4. And as you know, that positive sign is not necessary. Next one a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 4, all to the power of 5, quite simply will be a to the power of 15, b to the power of 20. And you could have as many values in the bracket as you want. So you could have 2x squared, y cubed, z to the power of 4 squared, and you can still work that out. 4x to the power of 4, y to the power of 6, z to the power of 8. Now what about... If I've got a plus b squared, would that be a squared plus b squared? 
Now, if you're in grade 9, you'll know that that would be a plus b times a plus b. And if I've multiplied that out, I get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Hmm. It seems like this rule is only working for multiplying and dividing. So we're not going to use it for adding. Only use the rule for multiplying and dividing. When I'm adding terms inside a bracket, it doesn't follow the same rule. So in summary, for the power of a product or a quotient, what I do is I apply the power to all factors. The last law we're going to discuss is the zero exponent law. So let's think, if I've got a to the power of naught, that could maybe come from a to the power of m minus m. And if I wrote that as a fraction, that would be a to the power of m over a to the power of m. So I'm getting this from the second law of exponents. Now, if I'm dividing two of exactly the same values, I know that my answer is 1. So whenever you've got a zero exponent, what that means is it just means 1. So just another mention of this, for example, if I have b to the power of 5 over b to the power of 5, that would be to the b to the power of 5 minus 5, b to the power of naught. Or I know that if I'm dividing exactly the same value by itself, that gives me 1. So those two are equal. So let's look at a couple of examples. If I've got negative 10 to the power of naught, everything here is to the power of naught, so my answer is 1. What if I've got negative 10 and just the 10 is to the power of naught? Because remember, the exponent only applies to exactly what it's next to. So this bit here will be 1, so my answer is negative 1. Even if I'm adding values inside a bracket, if the whole bracket is to the power of 0, that will be 1. But if I've got something like this, 5a to the power of 0, the only bit that's to the power of 0 is exactly what's next to the exponent. So that would be 5 times 1, which gives me 5. So in summary, if you have a 0 exponent, that will have a value of equals to 1. Now, before I go on to the summary of all the laws, I just wanted to discuss a few other things. Let me pop them in here. If you've got naught to the power of a, that would be naught times naught times naught, a times. Naught to the power of anything will be naught. So naught to the power of a value is naught. But interestingly enough, let me make sure that looks like an A. If you've got naught to the power of naught, let's think. Naught to the power of any value is naught. And if I've got an exponent of naught, that equals to 1. So which one is it? Mathematicians are un have not agreed on which this is, so we actually call that undefined. So here I've got a summary of the laws of exponents that you've learned so far. My next video will cover what to do with a negative exponent. Now, if you look at all these laws, all of them refer to multiplying or dividing. Remember, these laws do not work for adding or subtracting. Also, this order of the list doesn't really matter. If you look in different books or different videos, they might have law 4 written as law 4 and 5, or they might have my law 5 written as law 3. Don't let that bother you. There isn't a standard rule about which law is called which number. It's more important that you understand the laws and you're able to apply them. Lastly, it's helpful to think of the laws as shortcuts. So instead of as laws where either you're right or wrong, rather think of them as something that can help you. The laws of exponents are shortcuts so that you can work with powers quickly and efficiently.